there's a brief but important conversation that occurs in this week's Torah portion. Moses, Moshe, is trying to convince his father-in-law Yisro to remain with the Jewish people. But Yisro demurs. He says, no, I'm going back to my land, to my people. Moshe continues imploring Yisro, telling him, you're familiar with our encampments, and you can be our eyes. The commentators struggle with the meaning of that mysterious comment. What did Moshe mean? Some of the commentators explained that what he meant was that Yisro could be a tour guide of sorts. He was familiar with the area in which the Jews were traveling. You remember what it was like before GPS was invented? You'd get lost. You'd have to try to read a map. If you were a woman, you'd roll down the window and try to look for somebody who wasn't too sketchy from whom to ask directions. If you were a man, you'd drive around for an hour or two lost because, you know, real men don't ask directions. Or you would take that wonderful shortcut that would turn out not to be the greatest idea after all. So maybe that's what Moshe had in mind. Yisro could be a human GPS. Wonderful. But that's problematic. Because the Jews didn't need a GPS when they were in the desert. They had something far better. They had God's clouds of glory that would be over them at all times. The clouds would be stationary when they were encamped, protecting them and making sure that every day the weather was better than in San Diego. And when it was time to travel, the cloud would move, paving a path for them and showing them where to go. So why would they need Yisro as their tour guide? The answer, perhaps, is that Moshe was trying to teach everyone a lesson, including us nowadays. We don't rely on miracles. Yes, today there are miraculous clouds over us in the desert, but maybe they won't be there tomorrow. And maybe it's God who sent this wonderful tour guide, Yisro, who's familiar with the terrain. He's a local. He can guide us. Just like during the high holiday season, when God writes a number next to each of our names on the heavenly ledger, that number is the amount of money that we're going to make or the amount of money that we're going to keep, our net income for the coming year. But if you decide to couch potato the coming year and not work at all, you're not going to end up with that number. Now, we know that every dollar we make is a miracle. It all comes from God, but you've got to put in that effort. You've got to work at least enough so that it doesn't look like an open miracle when you net that income by the end of the year. Other commentators say that Moshe meant something a little different when he told Yisro that he could be our eyes. He meant, we will look to you. You can be a role model of sorts. You can be a human GPS, not just to guide us, somebody who knows us, who can speak to us, speak to our hearts. Where you want to go now, dummy? I was kind of thinking going to the club. You mean back home for some crying, sitting in your boxer shorts, playing Call of Duty, eating Cheetos, falling asleep with your fingers stained orange. Why could Yisro be such a good role model? First, because he was a convert. He didn't grow up Jewish. So for him, his observance of ritual could be fresher, more enthusiastic. It could inspire us not to observe God's commandments in a humdrum or rote manner. And second, he overcame so many obstacles in order to become a Jew. He was the high priest of Midian. He had wealth and fame and honor and glory, and he gave it all up in order to become a Jew. That sacrifice would also have been inspiring to the Jewish people. All of us need role models. We just need to know where to look.